The senior drivers are on the grid, ready for our second pre-final here at Valencia for the Winter Cup, the start of the 2016 season. And there are 34 drivers all ready and rocking and up for it now. The winner of this race, of course, gets pole position for the final to come. We just heard from Berke Bezlet. There he is on your screens, cart number 209. Had uh, a pretty good season last year to finish in ninth place overall in the championship. He gets better and better. He was really very much in the mix for either a win or at least a podium when uh, we were at the International Open at the end of last season at Adria, but uh, coming together uh, meant that he uh, didn't get the result he needed in the end, but he showed his real promise towards the end of last season, and he's continued that on here with some really good and entertaining moves. Now, our friends at uh, kartingmagazine.com in the UK have challenged me and Matt to uh, pick a winner for each race uh, at each event this season, and we get three points if they win, and a point if they get on the podium. Uh, so you want to follow that, kartingmagazine.com, or you can follow them on Twitter as well. And uh, Chris McCarthy, the journalist from that magazine, picked Burke Bezler as his man. So he's looking good at the moment. And I picked Renus van Kalmthut, who's uh, had a problem in warm-up this morning. He's only 17th on the grid after a couple of uh, comings together in the heats yesterday. And he also had a problem with the karting warm-up this morning and only got round one corner. So I'm up against it. I picked him and he, the runner-up in last year's championship, is only 17th on the grid. And you picked uh, Glenn Van Paris, Matt. And as you can see from the grid graphic there, Glenn's a bit further back, but it's actually quite a good result for him because he didn't have a good day on Friday in qualifying and he went forwards yesterday. Yeah, he certainly did. He had some really strong performances through the heats yesterday, but I don't think we've chosen too well as of yet. But uh, <laughs> we've still got the final to come. Uh, but Chris McCarthy has done well. He's got uh, Burke Besler as his winner. He's got two times to get through. Of course, he's got the pre-final and, of course, the final. Let's very quickly run you through the grid then for the seniors. It is Burke Besler after a great day yesterday who qualifies for the pre-final on pole position. Alongside him is the Brit Josh White on that front row. Second row is then going to be Nicholas Scholl and uh, Leonard Hugenboom, who was quickest on Friday and took all the pole positions for the heats yesterday. On row three, another Brit, that of Tom G Gamble and uh, Casper Corjus, the Estonian, is alongside. Then on row four, the Frenchman, Florian Venturi and Jonathan Hoggard, who steps up to seniors this year uh, from the junior class. Row five then sees Jani Johansson and Christopher Dreyspring. Row six, we've got Luke Falelms and Glenn Van Paddies, who was six in last year's junior, uh, sorry, senior championship. Uh, row seven is going to be last year's junior champion, Jack McCarthy, with uh, Dennis Mavlinov, another man who made a tremendous progress yesterday. He starts 14th on the grid. He was down on about row eight or nine for all of his heats yesterday. Uh, row eight then sees Luke Ibanez, the Spaniards, and Arena Van Camthorpe, second in last year's seniors. Row nine is Adrian Renadan and Jesper Schoberg. And inside the top 10, we've got the likes of uh, Miguel Socia Femini and Arno Sarazam. Row 11 sees Tommy Drouet and Rasmus Fridell from Sweden. Uh, row 12 is then going to be Josh Skelton and Stephanie Levesconte. Uh, 13 is Carrie Kivy and Oliver Rasmussen. Row 14 then sees Ida Cohen and Tom Croydon. Row 15, Andrew Williamson with David Remy. Row 16, another Spaniard, Maurizio van der Laan, work to do from towards the back, and Antonio Hodermans. And row 17 is going to see Patrick, Arang uh, sorry, Patrick Rundqvist and Marta Garcia, who, of course, was excluded from one of the heats yesterday. So 34th and last on the grid. Slightly longer race for the seniors for today. 12 laps to look forward to. Here's Chris Hartley with the start of the race. Thanks very much, Matt. Right, 12 laps, and there is nothing between the first five, six, seven, eight, nine drivers on the grid. It's going to be mighty tight, this, but Burke Besler has been very good in terms of overtaking. And he's got the inside line now, not something he benefited from yesterday with his grid position being on the outside. So a couple of times yesterday, he had to fight back from sort of eighth, ninth position. And we started on the front row of the grid for some of the races due to the fact he was caught on the outside row. This time he's on the inside and Josh White is on the outside. And we're just trying to scramble across that inside line as quickly as he can. Nicholas Scholl, number one, 116, will try and tuck in behind Berke Bessler. The lights go out. We are racing and it's three abreast. Bezler's not had the best start, but he's still on the inside line, and they won't be able to get past him. They're three abreast behind him. Bezler might lose the lead of the race here. He has lost the lead of the race. For the time being, he's wheel to wheel again to the next turn around the outside of him. There goes Tom Gamble. What a start from fifth on the grid. And that was wheel to wheel through two corners. There's bumping and boring behind us. Four or five carts in a uh, pilot going through the chicane at turn number three. One of them hasn't got going again. That's uh, Patrick Rundquist, who is on the last row of the grid, number 241. A couple of others caught out in that as well. We'll pick them off as they come round at the end of lap number one. 
that's only, and it's only Gordon Cart that hasn't got going again. But at the head of the field, Tom Gamble from fifth place getting ahead of Burke Fezler. 217 is the one that stopped out at the chicane. So that was Stephanie Levascont, I'm afraid, who was about three quarters of the way down the grid. And the cart is not going to start up, so she's out of the race on her debut in, well, not her debut in European competition, she was at Adria, but it's a debut full season. Now, Gamble comes under fire into turn number one from Burke Besler, who in turn is trying to fend off Nicholas Scholl, but Besler goes through, back into the lead of the race. Scholl follows him into second position, and it's down to third for the 2-3-3 cart of Tom Gamble, right with them in the number 206 cart, then closing up to them all the time is Glenn Van Paris, who's made up eight places in this race uh, already, Matt, so he's absolutely flying. Yeah, that's what we like to see then, so Glenn Van Paris is up there in fourth place, but what another exceptional fight we have towards the front of this field. Burke Besla uh, was there at the front, and the two guys behind him challenging to try and get through once again. Through turn number seven they go, uh, Nicholas Scholl is first in line, and also watch out for the man behind, which is going to be 233 Tom Gamble. And someone who just made a move there was Jonathan Hoggard, slide uh, down the inside or slid down the inside of the fourth place man, which was Glenn Van Baddies. He will try and get back at the final corner, but can't quite get in the mix there. But a great scrap now, which makes it a six way fight uh, for the lead of this race. Who can make a move this time down towards turn one? Uh, possibly for second place, big dive down the inside from Tom Gamble uh, to get the move and the place away from Burke Besler. So, Burke, you'd have expected to be from pole position right up there in terms of at the head of the field but he's struggling at the minute drops himself now down to third place and potentially under threat from the next man in line here which is going to be uh, Jonathan Hoggard in cart 300 then behind that Glenn Van Paddis and in sixth place now a good start from Leonard Hugenboom going back to that pile up through the chicane which involved about six carts on the first lap of the race Stephanie Lover Scott we know that was out of the race uh, we know as well that Patrick Runquist, who was sort of behind the incident but got caught up in it he was delayed quite badly and the two that uh, the other two that dropped right back are, were Arno Sarazan number two three four and Rasmus Friedel number two two seven who were right in front of Stephanie Levasconte uh, on the grid. So that coming together, I'm afraid. But uh, quite a few drivers down the order, and they have to fight their way through in the final later on. Head down then for the race leader, Nicholas Scholl. Did really well to get so high up the grid after a sort of slightly iffy start to the day yesterday in his first heat, but he had a couple of wins and uh, he started on the inside of road two and he's got himself into the lead of the race now from third on the grid so he leads tom gamble is about a length behind him that's all in second place jonathan hoggard who like tom gamble has come up from the juniors to the seniors jonathan looking for his first international podium but had some really strong results last year in his debut season in europe and finished fourth in the junior championship so he's going well in third place in cart 300 burke besler from pole is now down in fourth place glenn van paris has made up loads of places and is in fifth position. Leonard Hugenboom, who got pole position in qualifying on Friday, is the other man in that lead group. Now he's in sixth position at the moment. He's slipped back a little bit from his starting position, but he's still not far away from the leaders. So they weave their way through the chicane, accelerate onto the straight, and it's all about the battle for second place now because Tom Gamble gives a toe here to Jonathan Hoggard, who in turn gives a toe to Burke Besler, who gets past the pair of them. What a move from Burke Besler. He did that yesterday as well in one of the heats. So he's in two places in one move. He's gone from fourth to second. Besler's back on a mission, but there's half a second now to try and make up on the leader, Matt. Yeah, Burke Besler found a gap and made it work. He jumps up into second place, but now they've all got to work together once again to try and catch the leader. Uh, Nicholas Scholl, who, as you said, has a half a second margin, which is pretty big in terms of seniors. So let's see what now they can all do together. Uh, one to watch out for towards the back of that group is Josh White. He's just clawed himself onto the tail as well here. So Josh, who started outside of row number one, again, he's in that wrong place at the wrong time through the first corner. But now Josh is on the comeback. Makes his way past Leonard Hugenboom and to get now into sixth position. So let's see what the Brit can do. Leonard tries to fight back in towards the final corner, but it stays as it is now for sixth and seventh places. Still a good lead for Nicholas Schultz. Through this time, it goes up to six tenths of a second. And what's going to happen for second and third again? Looking very racy down towards the first turn. Jonathan Hoggard, but can't get through on Burke Besler, who pulled off that substantially cracking move in towards the first corner a lap ago. And now, by the looks of it, again, he's trying to pull away, and he's doing a grand job of doing so. So Burke Besler is picking up the uh, pace out there. A good lap time previous time through, 57.2 is what his best has been, exactly the same of that of Nicholas Scholl, who is still the race leader. So lots going on on track, top seven all vying for the lead of the race, and the gap gradually is starting to come down between Berko Besler and, of course, Nicholas Scholl, our leader, and everyone is looking to go with him as well. A couple of drivers who thought they might storm through, but haven't really. Arenas van Kalmthu, 
He's gone from uh, he's gone up a couple of places from 16th to 14th. And Jack McCarthy, the reigning junior champion, had two good heats yesterday, then an off in the other. Jack's made up a couple of places, but he's only gone from 13th to 11th. So it's spread out a bit in the midfield, and they're struggling to make up many places, those two. But at the head of the field, it's half distance now. Six laps done, six to go in this pre-final here at the Winter Cup. And leading by half a second still is Nicholas Scholl. With a very good run in one of the rounds of the Euro Challenge last year at Wackersdorf in Germany. But he's coming under fire now through. That is number 2 2 1. Josh White trying to make his way back through the field. And that was a good move just outside the top three. So Josh getting ahead of Glenn Van Paris, now being to the top five now. Up front, the gaps come down ever so slightly. Berke Besler, a tenth quicker at the start of this lap. He's only four tenths behind Nicolas Scholl now. Hogard is sort of going with him in third place as well. And up to fourth now it is. Uh, for Josh White, I like to think, so he's gone to the head of the second group, so fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh together, but they've lost ground now compared to the top three. Tom Gamble is trying to be back into fourth place here, trying to get past his fellow Britney slingshots, passed on the way into the chicane, lovely move that right at the end of the lap, so back up into fourth place for Tom Gamble, but now he's giving everybody else a huge toe down the straight, and they're all jostling around to try and get past him, he'll lose one place, he'll lose two, he'll lose three, nothing he can do to stop it, and so back up to fourth place comes Josh White and into fifth place now it's Leonard Hugenboom and all these carters do well to find a gap and there's another one trying to be made there as they work their way in towards turn number four and you always rely on your competitor as well to give you that little bit of racing room which is exactly what Josh White did in towards the final corner yeah, he's now back at the head of that train in for fourth place but look how much gap he's got to try and bring down on our third place man which is Jonathan Hoggard so Josh White is uh, up against it for this one as another move comes down the inside from Tom Gamble gets ahead of Leonard Hugenboom and uh, Glenn Van Paddies goes with him as well so the two uh, guys there in what's going to be fifth and sixth places or sixth and seventh no fifth and sixth work their way back through here very very close for that position at the minute down towards the uh, final chicane they come and there's more people starting to join the action as well so it turns into some eight cart train now as they go in towards the first corner and uh, let's see if any more moves can be made not quite they're very very hard to pick out which one is which because they all run fairly much with the same colors here but uh, tom gamble's done well or not such well in fact he's now dropped to the back of that little grab and there's more contact in the middle of the pack two come together as they work their way out the uh, third corner there and that could be uh, towards the back and out of the race possibly as they try and get re-going once more yeah, it's Venturi, number 232, and Ibanez, number 235. They were ninth and tenth. They come together, get tangled up, and drop way, way down the order. At the head of the field now, we're into the uh, final third of the race. Uh, Nicholas Scholl, only three tenths clear of Burke Besler. Burke is like an annoying door-to-door -door salesman. You can't quite get rid of him. And Nicholas Scholl just wants to get on with his life and win this race and get pole position. But Burke... He's not going away, he's coming back after him here. The half a second gap two laps ago has come down to almost nothing now and Burke is almost in a position to strike. He is in a position to strike and he takes no prisoners. Through he goes, Burke Besler. One sniff of a chance to get the lead of the race and he took it, but he has to close the door and does so just in time on the way into turn three because Nicholas Scholl wanted to play straight back. That little infight has allowed Jonathan Hoggard to join the party as well. So three of them together now. Yellow flag still waving after that incident through turn four. We've got Josh White in uh, fourth place, Glenn Van Paris in fifth. Yeah, Jenny Hansen's in sixth place, Tom Gamble seventh. Jack McCarthy's up to eighth place now. He's just got past Leonard Hugenboom. And then rounding out the uh, top ten, we've got Casper Korja, who I haven't seen too much of in this pre-final after a good day yesterday. Uh, move there for second place because Jonathan Hoggard now comes back into the mix. He's going to try and challenge our race leader, Nicholas Scholl, who's got back to the front somehow. But Berke Besler tries to remove round the outside in towards the final chicane. What a cracking fight this is amongst these three, keeping it as clean as ever. Uh, the push now comes from Jonathan Hoggard on Nicholas Scholl. Berke Besler trying to do a slingshot round the outside line, which may just work, not quite there as he tries to look for the cut back out of turn number one. But those three are vying for the final pole position here this weekend, uh, for the final here in Valencia. But who is going to get it? It's just a couple of laps now to go. It's Berke Besler send one down the inside line. He gets the job done now and makes himself heard once more in second position. But I don't think it's going to end quite like this. Uh, Nicolas Scholl gets a nice good run through turn number five. And of course, with that scrapping going on for second and third places, it may just give it a slight advantage uh, to those behind once more to catch up once more. Josh White sits in fourth place, 
don't rule him out here. He's been so, so strong. He's made up positions uh, from where he dropped down to after the starting grid. But Josh White needs a little bit of help from the man behind, which is Glenn Van Paris in cart 206. They come down towards the final corner now, but they're only going to have one more lap to go in this pre-final. And it's Nicolas Scholl who leads on to this last lap, Chris. Who's going to be second into turn one, though. Berke Besler having to defend from Jonathan Hoggard. And defence almost turns into attack as he breaks so late. He almost goes into the back of Nicolas Scholl. But on the final lap of the race, it's the Austrian that still leads from the Turkish driver. Two Brits then third and fourth with Jonathan Hoggard and Josh White. Then the Belgian driver, Glenn Van Paris, right with Josh White in fifth place. Janssen is still there in sixth position. So a couple more chances to overtake. One of the best chances into the next corner. Berke is not quite close enough, though. So it's looking good for Nicolas Scholl. Besler in second, Hoggard with him in third place, Josh White, another lap or two would have been with these three, I think he's catching them, but he's going to run out of time, so it's down towards turn nine for the final time in the race, and Scholl looks like he's got this one sorted, just the chicane to worry about now, the chequered flag is ready, on the brakes he goes, through the corner, he's just got to keep it neat and tidy, and he'll be on pole position for the final, Nicholas Scholl wins, Berke Besler right with him in second place, Jonathan Hoggard third, Glenn Van Paris gets past Josh White, with less than half a lap to go, he went through. Ahead of Josh White to take fourth place, fifth place to Josh White. Yanni Hansen in sixth position with a very good drive for the RS competition team. Tom Gamble seventh. Jack McCarthy came through to eighth place. Kasper Korgius was in ninth position. Renus van Kampert made up six places in the end. A steady drive up into the top ten. With Leonard Hugenboom slipping back to 11th. Christopher Dryspring slipped back a couple of places to 12th. Dennis Mavlinov. 13th, Thomas Drouet gained seven places to 14th, Luke Valence was 15th, Josh Skelton 16th, and then uh, Cairo Kibbe made up eight places to 17th, and Soberg in 18th place, Firmino Socias in 19th, and Rasmussen in 20th place. So what a fantastic race that was. Uh, there, I think almost everybody in the top five did a 57-1 there, but the one with the slightly quicker lap to get the fastest lap was Glenn Van Paris, 57.124 seconds at the end of a fantastic pre-final for the seniors.